Let's move to Masuda san. We have 20 minutes to go, so keep it in less than 10 minutes. I'm sorry. Very well. Thank you very much, Tanaka san, and thank you for coming all. I'll be talking about some issue of generational divide on the climate agenda. Climate change is uh, the result of the accumulation of CO2 emissions or greenhouse gases in the atmosphere well over the last two, 200 years. Assessment Report 5 of 2014, they cover a long range from 1750 to 2011. This is the magnitude of period we have to cover and uh, that is, means that what we do today with all these efforts do not necessarily benefit the generation, mature generation here, except the younger ones. That means why we like work like a hell if we cannot get the benefit of deleting climate risks? That is a big issue. Already, climate change is eating into the heart of the system. Today and yesterday, there is an enormous typhoon hitting heart of Japan. That is, it's a, we call it super typhoon Hagibis. Seven million people evacuated for precursory measures centering Tokyo area. Can you imagine seven million people evacuated? And already several people have died. And it is the largest ever hitting Japan over the last 60 years. And this could be the norm in coming years or so. Climate actions, mitigations in particular, are of very long-term nature because of 200 years scale could be shifted to another 100 years or so. And it's not, unfortunately, it's not appealing to politicians. Politicians, I sympathize with politicians because they face with so many agenda. Employment, pension, education, healthcare, building infrastructure, all these agenda. And if, because they are pressed with the pressure of re-election and election. They like to shift their attention to rather short-term issues which they can sell to the voters. And quite often, the long-term issues could be set aside or left behind unless there's many room to accommodate all these demand. However, however painful, we have to deal with climate issues, not setting aside. And we have to overcome the generational divide. And that kind of issue, I know there's a lot of criticism to what Greta Thunberg said, UN, and there's a, I saw many articles and videos in YouTube and elsewhere telling her what you as have said is brainwashed or exaggerating the risks. But it's, it's not the way to persuade younger generations. I saw many big speeches in the UN Climate Summit. Big speeches, 100 times, gathering seven, several hundred people several thousand people, but speeches don't mean anything unless underpinned by concrete actions. And a history shows very sad record. For example, if you remember, there was a famous Rio summit in 1990. Many head of states came in Rio and wrote a wonderful declaration of action-oriented one. They committed they will decrease CO2 emissions to 1990 level by the end of the 20th century. In a matter of 10 years, they promised, they signed. 
Were it followed actions? No, nothing happened. Rather, more CO2 emissions accelerated because of economic growth everywhere. And real action was taken in 1997 at COP7 of Kyoto Protocol. But Kyoto Protocol took eight years to be effectuated because of signatory, they need ratification by many countries. So already 15 years has passed with no actions after Rio summit in 1990. And we should not repeat all these mistakes made. What Greta said at the UN Nations shocked me because I was part of energy policy making together with Tanaka and others and I am partly responsible for that. And uh, I think we have to do something and we cannot leave all these younger generations left, be left behind or keep the generation gap un un uh, narrowed because we are responsible for the next generation and future generations. I am suggesting something very wild. Yes, our generation was challenged by this young little girl from Sweden on 23rd September at the United Nations. That challenge should be responded with sincerity and with concrete steps on top of what we have agreed upon in Paris in 2015. How Japanese government can respond to her accusation? Yes, Richard Cooper said, no coal fire plants, but my mother country is now constructing or planning 44 coal fired power plants because of cost issues, because of economic growth first. It's natural for the government and industry desire for that option, but this is not the answer for the future generation. There should be a coordinated response, not regretting in the past, but coordinated response to this young little girl representing future generation next year at the UN Climate Summit, and that should be widely shared by the entire population of the planet. Then that will be the first step to narrow the gap between us and the forthcoming generation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Masuda-san, for kind of confessing our sin. Mm -hmm.